Hello, my name is David Attali. I'm a psychiatrist at Saint Anne Hospital in Paris uh, and a PhD student at the Physics for Medicine Lab. First of all, a big thanks to the First Foundation for this symposium and for their support. Today, I'm going to present the preliminary results of our retrospective study, estimating the similar rise in transcranial ultrasound neuromodulation human studies that have been published. As you all know, the use of low intensity TUS for neuromodulation is promising. A lot of preclinical data um, has contributed to this enthusiasm, but for a safe clinical translation, we must keep thermal rise under control in order to ensure the thermal safety for patients. In human studies that have been published, thermal rise estimations are sometimes quite simple and could be improved. So in our lab, we developed a validated pipeline to estimate ultrasound induced thermal rise for a given setup on a given subject. And we experimentally validated this pipeline uh, doing thermal rise measurements on human skulls uh, using thermocouples that were calibrated, a brain tissue mimicking material, all that in a degassed water tank, so that the pipeline, the simulations, are as close as possible to the experiment. We previously presented the results of uh, this pipeline, with here, as you can see, the dotted curves representing uh, the pipeline data, which are close to the experimental data, both in the skull and in the brain at the focal point. In particular, if we look at the difference between the pipeline and the experiment, for the maximum thermal rise, the mean difference is less than 7% in the skull and around 11% at the focal point in the brain. And when we look at the absolute difference over time, over the duration of the stimulation and the cooling, the mean difference is less than 0.4 degrees in the skull and even less in the brain. So the objective of this study was to estimate the thermal rise for previously published human setups using this pipeline. We first extracted the previously published TUS human setups parameters, such as the transducer geometry that was used in the papers, the sonication parameters, the transducer positioning on the precise target location. This step was done in collaboration with Elsa Fouragnan and Gazale d'Armeni. And then we run our uh, pipeline, which is a fully automated three-step process. The first step consists in putting the target on the transducer on three sets of co-registered brain MRI on skull CTs. We double-checked that step with a neuroradiologist. The second step is the simulation of the acoustic propagation for that we use K-Wave. And the third step is a thermal rise simulation using a homemade code. So here are the preliminary results on a subset of the included studies. First of all, um, we first wanted to look at the worst case scenario. We first wanted to estimate the true effect of ultrasound. So we considered that between the transducer on the head of the subject, there was a water coupling at body temperature that is 37 uh, degrees. We know that uh, some teams use a water coupling at room temperature, around 23, 24 degrees, that will cool the skull and thus limit the thermal rise. But we first wanted to look at the worst case scenario. As you can see, the maximum thermal rise systematically occurs in the skull with some setups uh, leading to thermal rises of up to seven degrees. In the brain, the heating is more often close to the skull than at the focal point with some setups leading to thermal rises of up to three degrees. And finally, there is a high variability for some setups, uh, the thermal rises are up to plus or minus two degrees, depending on the skull. To conclude, this study shows again 
the value of being able to make personalized estimation of sample size. This could lead to individual optimization of syndication parameters in the future. And we must be careful because uh, the maximum summer rise occurs in the skull and it may lead to the heating of the brain near the skull more than at the focal point. As a reminder, the syndication parameters used on non-human primates need to be adjusted for humans as the summer rise is higher on humans. Indeed, the human skull Uh, is thicker or more heterogeneous than uh, other species and uh, the summer rise is higher on humans. The next steps of this work will be to uh, include more studies and to simulate more scenarios including one with a water coupling at room temperature. Thanks a lot for your attention.